Let's read Genesis chapter 45. And let's read verses 1 through 13. Does anybody want to read 1 through 13? I can, I can do that. Okay, great. Thank you. Now the famine was severe in the land, and it came to pass when they had eaten up the grain which they had brought from Egypt, that their father said to them, go back, buy Hold us on. a little. Genesis 45. Oh, I'm sorry. I went back a page. That's okay. The fam the You're trying to yeah, the <laughs> We'll okay. be in Genesis forever. We keep doing that. <laughs> <laughs> take, Damn, one, take one forward and two back. <laughs> That's right. They, yeah. Well, the fan's on here, and it, while I looked up, it blew the page over. <laughs> <laughs> then Joseph could not restrain himself before all those who stood by him, and he cried out, Make everyone go out from me. So no one stood with him while Joseph made himself known to his brothers. He wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard it. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Does my father still live? But his brothers could not answer him, for they were dismayed in his, in his presence. And Joseph said to his brothers, Please come near to me. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom you sold into Egypt. But now do not therefore be grieved or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you, to preserve life. For these two years the famine has been in the land. There are still five in which there will be neither plowing nor harvesting. And God sent me before you to preserve a pos posterity for you in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you who sent me here, but God, and he has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house, and a ruler throughout all the lands of Egypt. Hasten and go up to your father and say to him, Thus saith your son Joseph, God has made me lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not tarry. How far do you want? Thirteen? I don't yes, know. thirteen, yeah. Okay. Uh, Verse 10 there, you shall dwell in the land of Goshen, Goshen, and you shall be near to me, you and your children, and your children's children, your flocks and your herds, and all that you have. There I will provide for you, lest you and your household and all that you have come to poverty, for there are still five years of famine. And behold, your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin see that it is my mouth that speaks to, to you. So you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and all that you have seen, and you shall hasten and bring my father down here. All right, so we have here the, uh, the continuation of the story. Now, sometimes chapters um, have a break. Um, that is, they, they go from one thing to another thing, from one topic to another, one event to another. But here we see there's a continuation, there's a, there's a continuous flow. Um, so Joseph is at the point where he can't take it any longer. He's been, he's been playing the part of an Egyptian official. Um, he's been um, seeking to gain as much information as he can. He's been trying to... Um, test his brothers to see what kind of men they are, what kind of character they have. And um, he, he can't take it anymore at this point. Now, why does Joseph break down? You know that he does. He can't control him any, himself anymore. He cries. Why? What's going on? Well, he's, he missed him. Yeah. <laughs> okay. He's missed them. Uh, yeah. 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 He's, he's happy to be with his brothers and wants evidently wants to see his father very badly. All right. Absolutely. Um, what, what has he learned about um, 
what has he learned about his brothers during all of these um, kind of little tests? About all of them or, or about Benjamin? Well, all of them. Uh, we don't know much about what Benjamin is like at this point. We're not really told. But the rest of the brothers, what does he know about them? Well, he's found out that they they realize what they've done and what the uh, the mistakes that they've made. Mm, yeah. And whenever whenever a person starts realizing the mistakes that he's made in his past, uh, it helps him to understand what his future ought to be. Right. Right. Yeah. He's going to. Go ahead. I think they realize too that uh, they've been in prison as much as he has for what they've oh. done to him. Ah, uh, very interesting. Why? Why would you say that? Uh, the guilt and everything mm -hmm. that they've carried with them all these years. Uh, Joseph always knew that he had done what God wanted him to do, and they knew that they had transgressed. You know, right. so I. That they had carried the greater burden, mm. you know, at the same time that he was in in prison. Right, right. Yeah, there's definitely um, they have they have changed. There's something going on with them, and I like what you had to say. I hadn't really thought about that, but they've been they've been in prison all of these years, and and it's evident from the. The conversation that they continue to bring up God in the midst of all of this, and um, that God is doing this to them, and, and those kinds of things, absolutely. So Joseph, he breaks down. Um, you know, clearly he's happy to see uh, his brother Benjamin. He, I think, he's happy to see um, that his brothers have have changed. They have. Uh, there seems to be repentance on their part. That they, they're mournful over kind of what has happened. I think he's he's kind of catching a glimpse of all this, and of course. You know, he's hopeful that he'll be able to see his father again. Remember, he, he's the, uh, he was the special son. He had gotten the coat of many colors. He hasn't seen his father in a very long time. So, yeah, I think all of this is now weighed so much on Joseph himself. Um, he's been away from family and, and home and everything for, for many years. And now, uh, now is a good time. He can't hold it anymore. He's going to uh, – he, he's just going to break down. Um, now, what's the reaction of the brothers to the revelation that the man that they have been speaking to and, and, and all these events have been going on, that this is Joseph? How do they react? They don't believe it. Speechless. <laughs> Speechless. They don't believe it. Uh, they're stunned, right? You've got stunned silence. They're, uh, they're perplexed. Um, if that were you, what might be going through your head? Some kind of trick. <laughs> some kind of trick, right. You, you might want some proof. Yeah, give me some proof that you are who you say you are. Who, who are you? Yeah. Uh, so there's a, uh, there's a, a, they're just so confused probably, and uh, uh, they're speechless. I mean, I think that's pretty much the, the way it gets put there. They're speechless. So how does Joseph view, though, as, as – as this unfolds and they have this discussion, how does Joseph view his journey into Egypt? And what does Joseph say to his brothers? What's that conversation like? What, is, what does he say to the brothers and how does he view his trip down into Egypt? Joseph. Well, he was saying you were mean, but it was for a purpose and it, it was a purpose that God had set. And, uh, it all, it's all come to pass that we're doing what God wanted us to do in the first place. Okay. So he, he sees his journey as fulfilling a, a role in God's plan anyways, that God ultimately kind of had um, this plan that, that Joseph was going to go down to Egypt. Um, he also, you know, speaks to his brothers. Um and, you know, he, he points out the sin, right? I mean, it's not like he doesn't point out the sin. He says, I'm Joseph, right? I'm your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt, right? So uh, it's not just, I'm your brother Joseph, I haven't seen you in a long time. So the, the sin of, that the brothers have committed is mentioned. 
um, in verse four. And, but then he says in verse five, don't be distressed or angry with yourselves uh, because you sold me here. For God sent me before you um, to preserve you. So he, he assures them that, that God has had a plan to utilize everything that's happened to make preparation really for the whole family. I think um, Joseph is, is getting a big picture view of kind of what's going on. And of course, what, what does he ask as well? What's, what's one of the final questions he asks? I'll ask if his father was still alive. Yeah, he asks if, uh, if his father is still alive in verse three, right? I'm Joseph. Is my father still alive? That's a big, that's a big deal to him, right? He's, he still uh, wants to make sure that his father is alive. He wants to get to see, uh, wants to get to see his dad. So, so Joseph says that um, that it was God's plan for him to go down to Egypt. Now, does that mean? Does that mean that God made people act wickedly? That He made them sin in order to get Joseph down to Egypt and then eventually into Pharaoh's service? No, no. no. So even though Joseph says this was God's plan, he doesn't mean. God is the one who made you act wickedly and you, you, you're not um, culpable of your crimes, that, uh, you know, it's okay, you sin, but it's not your fault, it's God's fault? No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, God works all things, right? This is just an example of God working all things for the good of those who love him. And, of course, God is able to use the free choices of men and women, right, humans, to accomplish his goal and his purpose without making them do anything, right? He doesn't make people choose to do wicked things, but he's able to utilize the choices that people make to accomplish his goal. Um, he is not going to be outwitted. He's not going to be outdone by what people do. And God's plan was that Joseph would come down into Egypt. But again, that's different than saying God's plan was to uh, to force or make Joseph's brothers do this sinful, wicked thing, um, to lie, right? I mean, all the things they do, is they're all sins that are condemned throughout the scriptures. So it would be problematic for us to think God made them do all of that, right? I mean, scripture says elsewhere that, you know, God can't lie, he, you know, he's not the one who perpetrates sin and things of that nature. So, so the one thing we can't say is that God made these brothers do wicked and sinful things. Now, this gets us into realms that uh, we, you know, to be honest, we don't have a whole lot of information about. Um, did God look down the corridor of time to see what these brothers would do and utilize that for his plans. We, you know, we can get into all kinds of speculation. At the end of the day, what we can say for sure is that God had a plan that Joseph would go down into Egypt and that he would work through whatever happened to get Joseph to the position where he would be able to save his family. Um, and that um, God did not force or coerce anyone to do anything. He simply utilized um, what people were uh, doing for his good pleasure and his good purpose to, uh, to bring good out of it, bring good out of it. What does, uh, well, let's, let's read on. Let's read on. Does anybody have anything on these verses before we move on? <clears throat> All right, let's move on. Let's look at verses 16 through 28. Um, 16? Yeah, 16 through 28. You're 14 and 15, aren't you? Well, yeah, well, yeah, because uh, 14 and 15 is really just a uh, continuation of him kissing his brother, weeping. Um, oh, okay. And then he talks with, uh, he talks with his brother. So we really haven't missed anything, but sure, we can read. Uh, let's be thorough. <laughs> let's be thorough. <laughs> We're going to read it all. So, um, <laughs> We'll read 14 to 28. Um, I'll do that unless somebody is, uh, is really desiring. They want to read. Um, does anybody really want to read right now? 
Go okay. for it. All right. Um, I would assume you'd jump in there if you wanted to. All right. Let's look at 14, uh, and we'll go through 28. So it says, then, uh, then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept. Uh, this Clearly, he's just excited to see his brother. Benjamin wept upon his neck. 15, and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. After that, his brothers talked with them. When the report was heard in Pharaoh's house, uh, Joseph's brothers uh, have come. It pleased Pharaoh and his servants. And Pharaoh said to Joseph, say to your brothers, do this. Load your beasts and go back to the land of Canaan. Take your father and your household and come to me. And I will give you the best of the land of Egypt, and you shall eat the fat of the land. And you, Joseph, are commanded to say, do this. Take wagons from the land of Egypt for your little ones and for your wives, and bring your father and come. Have no concern for your goods, for the best of all the land of Egypt is yours. The sons of Israel did so. And Joseph gave them wagons according to the command of Pharaoh, and gave them provisions for the journey. To each and all of them, he gave a change of clothes. But to Benjamin, he gave 300 shekels of silver, and five changes of clothes. To his father, he sent as follows, 10 donkeys loaded with the good things of Egypt, and 10 female donkeys loaded with grain, bread, and provisions for his father on the journey. And he sent his brothers away. And as they departed, he said to them, do not quarrel on the way. So they went up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to their father, Jacob. And they told them, Joseph is still alive and he is ruler over all the land of Egypt. And his heart became numb for he did not believe them. But when they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said to them, and when he saw the wagons that Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of their father, Jacob, revived, and Israel said, It is enough. Joseph, my son, is still alive, and I will go and see him before I die. Okay. All right, so what does Pharaoh say, and what does he do when he hears that Joseph uh, has been reunited with his brothers? What, what, is, what is Pharaoh, how does he get involved? Go get your family and bring them up here, and I'll give them a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill, did you say? Did you want to say something in there? He just said what I was going to say. Okay. All right. He took it. <laughs> took it from me. All right. Uh, yeah. Anything else? Anyone else? Well, not not only he was going to give them the best of everything. It right. wasn't. He was going to bring them down there, and they'd fend for themselves. He was giving them land, and he sent all kinds of food and, and everything else. Uh, he sent animals home. Up and right. animals home, and the whole bit. So, uh, right, right. He's giving them everything. Yeah, it wasn't a token type thing. It was mm. uh, provide everything they need, even clothes. Right to the to the brothers. Now, why does Pharaoh do that? Why is Pharaoh willing to do? I mean, do, do you think? Do you think that um, Pharaoh? And, and this, this would be speculation. We wouldn't know for sure from the biblical text. But do you think Pharaoh did this for everybody? Like, hey, you got some long lost relatives. Bring them down. We'll, we'll bring them into Egypt. We'll give them the. I mean, is is this just maybe typical of Pharaoh? Do you think, or or what do you think? think I think it was because of what Joseph had done for him, and he was he was really thankful to Joseph for the position that he had put him in. Right, right. Yeah, Joseph is special um, in Pharaoh's eyes, right, for a number of reasons. Mm -hmm. Not only did Joseph uh, – Joseph was the only one who was able to um, interpret those dreams. He gives them good counsel, and then, of course, Pharaoh puts him in charge. And he does a, a fabulous job for two years, right? He does, he does a, a wonderful job. Well, actually, it's more than two years, but two years of the famine. Um, it, everything's going well. So, yeah, Joseph is special in, uh, in Pharaoh's eyes. And so he wants to bless Joseph, right? He's going to bless his family. But the reason he's blessing is, you know, Jacob and these other brothers. He doesn't know them. 
But the reason he's doing it is because he wants to honor and um, and and really show respect to uh, to Joseph for all again for all that he's done and, and the kind of um, how important he is. Now, what is God doing? Or did somebody want to say something? Go ahead. I, I, I was wondering, do you think that perhaps uh, Pharaoh saw this as an advantage to himself? You know, he, he's not really a believer necessarily, even though he's he's uh, interpreted these dreams. But perhaps, you know, this guy's really lucky to have him. Or you know, this thing must be a this will be a good thing for me. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I think you're yeah, I think you're right. Um, I think there's probably a number of things going on there. I do think that there's an aspect of um, of, of honor. That he is, he's wanting to um, to kind of, we would say, bless. He's wanting to kind of show a little bit of honor, um, and and his um, appreciation for for Joseph. But I think you're right there. That there may be something going on there with Pharaoh, where I don't want to lose my lucky charm. You yeah. know, I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of my lucky charm. Uh-huh. And uh, no, 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 don't go to your long lost you know, relatives, have them come down here. We'll take care of them. So yeah, there's probably some of that too, right? Um, I hadn't really thought about it, but yeah, there's, there's probably some of that in there because like you said, Pharaoh is not a believer in Yahweh. Um, he may or may not know about the one true God, but he is certainly not, he would certainly not be worshiping um, him as the one true God. He's, you know, this is a pagan. And he's worshiping multiple gods, but he recognizes there's something different about Joseph, and that God or the gods are with Joseph, and so he's going to definitely want to keep his uh, his lucky charm around. You remember that this was the same thing that happened in Potiphar's house, and it happened in the prison as well. That Potiphar saw, and the prison warden right saw that there was something special about Joseph, and that they were being blessed because of uh, because of Joseph, and because God was with Joseph, or the gods were with Joseph. Some some powerful being was with Joseph and making them prosper. So absolutely, I think that's probably one of the reasons why um, Potiphar is angry. To be to be honest, I think he's lost the lucky charm. You know, uh, when Joseph has to get put in in prison, he's he's lost out. Uh, but yeah, you bring up a good point, Mike. Yeah, I think there's probably something going on there. Now. What is God doing in all of this section here? Because, again, ultimately God is behind all of this, um, not forcing people to do things, but utilizing and using uh, free will choices of men uh, to accomplish things. So, you know, big picture, what is God doing for, um, for Jacob? But God said that he was going to be with Jacob. Yeah. Yeah. Had he made covenants with Jacob? I'm going to bless you. I'm going to take care of you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Is God fulfilling his promises? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Right. These aren't trick questions. These are, these are the easy ones. <laughs> yeah. You know, God is just fulfilling his promises, even though we haven't seen. Very interesting. We really haven't seen what's been going on with Jacob, have we? Jacob's life is a bit of a mystery to us at this point. We've focused in mostly on Joseph, a little bit on Judah, but mostly on Joseph. And um, and it's kind of coming back around where Jacob is, is getting in the picture again. But God is doing, I think, One of the big things we're seeing is that God is working to fulfill his promises um, to Jacob, and he's doing it uh, through Joseph and all that Joseph's gone through. Um, But we're going to kind of wrap it around and start to see Jacob come back around again. All right, so in verse 24, verse 24, um, Joseph says to his brothers, uh, do not quarrel on the way, right? He sends them off. He loads them up. He says, bring dad back down here. Bring everybody down. And then the final instruction to them is, do not quarrel on the way. Um, why? Why does he say that? Uh, 
Why do you think he says that? He knows how they are. It's kind of like your mother sending you off with your brother saying your way back to the house or something, you know, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Is it, is it, is it reasonable? I didn't understand, I didn't understand what he said. You didn't understand what Mike said? Yeah. Try again, I had, Mike. A, I had a great grandson come in and distract me just while he was doing that. Mike, say what you said again, just briefly. I need to hear. Well, just basically uh, that he was just telling them, uh, I, I know how you all are. And I know, so you all just behave, you know, like your mother telling your brother and you when you go out someplace, you, you boys better behave while you're out, you know. Oh. <laughs> he knows their pattern. He knows the way they, they uh, fight among themselves. And so right. she, he just tells them to, to behave. <laughs> right, yeah. Look, now look, look at ahead. what he's done. Look at what he's done too here. Uh, when he gave them changes of garments, that yeah. he gave Benjamin three hundred pieces of silver and five changes of garments, and you can see these brothers going home saying, "Well, why yeah. didn't we get?" <laughs> right, right, he, yeah. He knows how they've acted in the past, and maybe they would revert back. <laughs> Who knows? That's right. That's right. Yeah, I mean, Joseph may still be. You know, kind of unsure. He's, I mean, you know, let's be realistic. He hasn't had that long of a time with these brothers. He, I, I think he's got enough information. He feels like he, he can trust them. But, you know, there's still maybe some wavering doubt there, a little unsure of how much the brothers have changed. And he wants to encourage them, you know, to make sure that they make the trip back as quickly as possible and not really have any kind of disasters along the way. Now, is it likely, um, or is it at least possible, that when they start going home, they might start playing the blame game? You know, this, this brings up stuff from the past, doesn't it? I mean, this brings up stuff that happened years ago. Is it, is it likely or reasonable that maybe one of the brothers might say something like, um, see, I told you not to do that, you know, back selling them slavery and no it's your fault and you I mean, could, could that possibly happen yeah that's what i was gonna say they could also think uh that back and forth of well look how it turned out we're gonna be fine now so it wasn't such a bad thing yeah it could be right yeah yeah and yeah they, there could be this back and forth and really what that's going to do is it's going to slow it down and it could cause a problem right if the if the brothers start arguing, it could turn into a major fight. Now that never happens in families today, right? That that kind of stuff. Just <laughs> happen. So there's no lesson that we could learn from any of this. Um, no quarreling along the way. I mean, it's just it's just something that can tend to happen. Um, so if there's a big blowout, if there's a big fight or something along those lines, this is going to delay Jacob coming down and, um, and, and Joseph being able to see his father or maybe keep it from happening altogether, um, you know, depending on if it really got bad. So he's kind of, I think there's a bit of a rebuke in there and a bit of a, a warning and a command and all of that kind of stuff. You know, hurry up and don't quarrel on the way. Don't worry about it, you know. Um, God oh, okay. took care of everything. Just hurry up and come back. Um, but to, uh, to Tim's point there, too, uh, the brothers may be thinking, ah, no big deal. Um, look at how great it turned out. So, well, the, the sons had lied to their father, too. And they may have been trying to figure out when they went back and said, Joseph is still alive. Would he ask the question, you said he had been killed. <laughs> You know, I mean, there's all, kind, all right. kinds of things there that right. get into that. That's right. I hadn't, um, I hadn't really given too much thought. Um, that, that, that hadn't dawned on me. But, yeah, they lied to their father. And um, their father is going to be like, okay, well, you said he was dead. Where did you get the cloak? And then yeah. you talk to Joseph later. And Joseph going to be like, no, no, no. They sold me into slate, right? So, <laughs> yeah. So, 
No, they could be all kinds of problems. Yeah, well, they brought back the blood. They had the blood right. all over that clothing they brought back. So right. like, they would probably argue about how are we going to explain this to, uh, to, my, to, our, to our dad. <laughs> right. Yeah, how are we going to explain this? Let's figure it out. Let's tell another lie. <laughs> um, back, back in the first part of that chapter. Yeah. All right, I can you, boys. Um, Joseph is telling them, We've had a you know very lean two years here, but there's going to be five more. So he's wanting them all to get prepared and to get down there where they will be taken care of for the rest of this famine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. There's there's definitely uh, multiple reasons as to why he would say don't quarrel along the way. Um, lots lots going on in this. He just wants to make sure he, they get his father down there, and then he'll be taken care of through the famine. Right, absolutely. Yeah, that's still weighing heavy on her <laughs> and, and And Joseph is in the know. Uh, the brother yes. and his father, they, right, they don't know how long this is going to be, but Joseph knows, so he kind of gives them that warning, absolutely. That's right. Yeah, good point, good point. So when the brothers get back and they, they tell their father, Jacob, uh, the story, um, what does he think? What's he think, think about it? He didn't believe him at first. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, does that is that make sense that he wouldn't kind of believe them that he'd be in a bit of shock? Well, <laughs> if someone brought something back with blood all over it and said they'd seen uh, my son killed, <laughs> it would be uh, kind of not believable <laughs> that yeah. he's still. It'd be one of those surreal moments, right? You, you, would, right. you would be, I think you'd be wrestling, and I think that's what's going on. Um, of course, Jacob is a wrestler, right? Wrestles with God and all of that. I think he's probably wrestling with that idea, that concept. Um, does he want it to be true? Sure, he wants it. Sure. Absolutely. But part of him is wrestling with the reality. You know, the, that he thinks, what he thinks is reality. I mean, this, this has been a long time, hasn't it? I mean, he's lived with the belief that Joseph is dead for years. And so all of a sudden, this would be, this would be hard to believe. You would, you, it would be a wrestle within you. Um, so, so Jacob, I think, is wrestling within himself. And this is really very much like a resurrection, isn't it? Isn't it, isn't it kind of symbolic? Isn't it in some ways like a resurrection? Uh, my son was dead, and now he's alive. As far as Jacob and all the family, his brothers and everybody, did they believe that Joseph was dead? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah they all believed that he was dead. Nobody thought he was alive. Even the brothers, who knew that they sold him into slavery. They believe that he had gone and he is dead now. Um, they didn't even think the possibility that he could still be alive. They just, they, everybody assumed that Joseph was dead. So in a very real way, what we need to see here is this is a symbolic resurrection. It's very similar to what happened. In, well, it, it's similar in the symbolic sense of what happened with Abraham and Isaac. You know, the Hebrew writer tells us, that um, Abraham received back Isaac from the dead, symbolically, right, um, figuratively, from the dead. That's the, that's the same thing that's going on here. So Abraham experienced his son raised from the dead. Jacob is experiencing his son being raised from the dead as well. There's, um, there's a lot of resurrection. You know, some people, and this, this is worth taking a moment, some people don't think that the Old Testament discusses uh, the resurrection very often. And it's not, it's really not in the Old Testament. It's mostly in the New. There's a couple passages in the Old. I disagree. I think there's a lot there. The problem is we don't actually examine some of the typology or some of the symbolism. Uh, this right here, Joseph is a, a symbolically, uh, this is a resurrection. So, uh, so that's going on here. Jacob is amazed at it, and um, and we would be as well. 
he would be as well. Now, did Jacob and Joseph have, have easy lives where everything seemed great and they had no hardships whatsoever? No. No, no, right? <laughs> silly question, James. Stop asking silly questions, right? Um, but it's one to think about. It's one to think about. Jacob and Joseph, neither of those men had an easy time. But was God still guiding? Was he still blessing? Was he still protecting and providing for both of them? Yes. Mm. Can we learn anything from this section? Can we learn anything from that? God will take care of us. <laughs> God will take care of us. Absolutely. God takes care of his people. Now, God blessing and God guiding, does that mean that life is going to be a bed of roses? No. <laughs> it's not going to be peaches and cream? No. <laughs> mm. Right? doesn't mean yeah, that it's it always... Sorry, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say that, you know, when you said that hadn't Jacob received the blessing and promises from God, and you think about him when this happens, it's definitely in the sunset of his life and all the hardship that he had endured. And just recently, you know, losing Joseph, but then just recently having this strange uh, these strange events happening, number one, they're in a famine, and then his boys are going to Egypt, and they're coming back and saying, we've got to take, you know, uh, right. your favorite back with us, and all of this has to be stress on him in a way to, oh, it's evidence of his faith that he didn't give up on God, because mm -hmm. he could have been like, God, you, you told me you were going to, you know, bless me, and I'm not feeling very blessed right now. Right, right. Good point. Um, the blessings of God, God guiding his people, does not mean, and this is important for us to get a hold of, it does not always look like he's doing that. It does not always look like, from our perspective, that we are being blessed or that we're being taken care of. It doesn't always look that way. I, I would suggest we need to get over um, what I'm going to call an immature understanding of what it means to be blessed by God. It doesn't mean that life is going to be easy. It doesn't mean that you won't lose your job, your house, or your car. It, it doesn't mean that you won't get sick or that life's going to be just fabulous. It, it doesn't mean health, wealth, and prosperity. That just not what we find in the scriptures. Um, we didn't find it in Jacob's life all the way through. We didn't find it in Joseph's life. Um, in fact, what we found was a lot of hardship. But the reality is God is walking through all of this with his people. And that's, I think, is the important, the, the important point. The blessing of God doesn't, it doesn't mean that uh, you may always have you know, all the money you need to pay your bills. You may struggle. And um, we don't always understand why or what's going on. Um, Joseph, he was sold into slavery. Um, he, went, he went not only into slavery, he ended up in a pit. He ended up in, in a prison, um, in a dungeon of places. So these kinds of things, um, it matters what we think about what it means to be blessed by God. Um, ultimately, we know that nothing can harm us because if we die, we go to be with the Lord. But if we think, if we think that being blessed by God means life is going to be easy, that we're never going to have any challenges, that it's not going to look hard, that it may not look dark, um, then we, we've got a very immature understanding of God's blessings and providence and guiding and all that. I'll give one example. You know, I mentioned on Sunday at the beginning of the sermon, I, I told the story about a man who was beaten to death, slowly tortured, and he didn't give up on Jesus until his dying breath. Was God, 
Was God blessing him? Was God guiding him? Was God with him? Ah, see, ultimately, yes, because that man went on to victory, but we don't often think about it that way. We look for the here and the now, and quite often, we do receive tangible, physical blessings from God. They're, they're, you know, we do have happy times, but we can't, uh, we can't equate happy times with blessings and guidance from God. So um, does that make sense? Yeah. 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 It's, it's important because if we have the wrong view of what it means, then, um, then our faith, as, as our brother Tim just mentioned, you know, Jacob did not give up on God, even though everything was going wrong a lot of times. You know, we see a lot of bad things happening. He, did, he didn't give up, um, and neither did Joseph. Joseph did not give up on God. He continued. Now, that doesn't mean, we don't have record of it, but that doesn't mean that, it did, that they didn't cry out to God and ask why, what's going on. It means that they never return. you know, they never turned from him. They continued to... Uh, to try and trust and obey as, as best they could. They continue to, to cling to him and to hold on to him. But uh, if, they had a, if they had a wrong view, it could easily turn into turning away from God. Um, if this is what it means to be a Christian, I'm just going to go my own way kind of thing. And there's bigger things going on. So it's important we think about that. Um, all right. So God is walking with us through the trials and the hardships. Anybody got anything in chapter 45 that they want to mention or talk about? <clears throat> I was just thinking about uh, 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 Joseph, uh, uh, Jacobs. Wait a minute. Oh. Joseph is the second in command. No, oh, I'm thinking. Which one is the father? He, uh, he, Jacob. I, Jacob. Jacob. I, okay. Jacob. He thinks that Joseph is dead, mm. but he thinks Benjamin is alive. And what uh, Judah ends up telling uh, Joseph is uh, if Benjamin... Uh, if daddy loses Benjamin, he will die. But in verse 25, it says they told him that Joseph was alive and he went numb. <laughs> it was, so, you know, both of them were a shock to him. Uh, either yeah. the thought, either way, would. Uh, Are you right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Very shocking kind of news. Anyone else? Okay, I'm not going to get into, we only have, uh, we only got five minutes left, four minutes left, so I'm not going to get into chapter 46, but we'll, ju we'll jump into chapter 46 next, uh, next week. 